Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful. Thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. And of course, hopefully, your first listen each and every day. Don't forget that Locked On Patriots is a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, which means you should download, subscribe to, follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts to ensure that you get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots, Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter, on X, on the Bird app, whatever you want to be calling it these days, at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. Also, if you're showing some love to Locked On Patriots social media style, follow our account there as well at L-O underscore Patriots. And Pats fans, today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to and they help you do it faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. In terms and conditions apply. Pats fans, the bye week is now a thing of the past, and your New England Patriots are back to work and ready to get back on the practice fields this coming Tuesday as they prepare for a Week 12 matchup against the New York Giants. And I know a lot of you out there are wondering about draft position and what the Patriots might do on the field and how it's going to affect it. Well, we're going to spend some time talking about what the Patriots need to do on the field in these remaining seven games. That's right, folks. It is Mailbag Monday, so that means the man who Mondays were created for has graced us with his presence today my good friend, the kind of Murphy fisto himself, the legendary Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports. Thank you for coming to me in friendship today and joining me, Don Murph. Oh, it's great, Michael. It's great. Coming off the bye, nice and relaxed and, and set for the uh, for the rest of the season. And I'm glad we don't have a game to talk about. So that means we get to get to more of your questions. And, uh, and we got some good ones this week. We absolutely do, folks. Thank you for taking the time to send in a question to us. It's been a long time since we've done a full Mailbag Monday here on Locked On Patriots. And without further ado, buddy, let's get into it. And the biggest question on everyone's mind this week is who will start for the New England Patriots at quarterback going forward? Murph, we talked to Bill O'Brien on on, uh, Monday morning. He offered a little bit of insight, but didn't exactly tip his hand, said that Bill Belichick would be thinking about it one way or another. Well, I ask you, my friend, Caden Lincoln wants to know, all of our fans, all of our everydayers, our casual listeners, and our first-timers here on Locked On Patriots want to know who should start at quarterback for the New England Patriots going forward. Well, you know, what O'Brien had to say this morning, not a lot of people are going to read into that, are they? <laughs> assistants assistants make recommendations and head coaches make decisions, and that's the way it's going to be. I told everybody last week who was going to be starting against the Giants. All right, we, we sat here in this chair the end of last week um, after the game, and I said that Mac Jones was going to be starting, and Mac Jones is going to be starting uh, simply because Mac Jones is the best quarterback in a Patriots uniform right now. And uh, whether you people like it or not, Bill Belichick is still trying to win football games. Mm. You know, the dreaded T word comes out an awful lot, Murph. Yeah. You know, we hear it all the time. Are the Patriots tanking? Do they want to tank for Caleb Williams? And we saw Caleb put on a pretty good performance yesterday. Uh, Drake May looking pretty good. Uh, So there were some options out there that give you optimism, folks, going into the 2024 season. But that's 2024. For 2023, the right. New England Patriots need to take a look at what is in their best interest. Are they simply playing out the string? Are they trying to play for pride? Is there something still in that quarterback room that they see in Mac Jones? I know a lot of you fans out there seem to think that that ship has completely sailed. But speaking with Bill on Monday morning, it didn't quite seem like he was ready to hand over the reins to someone else. He was complimentary of Mac when he didn't have to be. And he said, I believe everything is fixable. It's important to point out there are 10 other guys on the field. There are coaches on the sidelines. If you're putting all of the blame on one guy, you're missing the point. You're missing the bow here. And you're not looking at the big picture. He doesn't believe in the yips. He says Mac has played well. Mac will play well again. Those two last statements, whether you agree with them or not, and I'm not endorsing them, neither is Murph. These are Bill O'Brien's statements. Right. Those two statements, folks, were not provoked. They were given freely by Bill O'Brien, which leads me to believe that they still think 
there's a level that Mac Jones can go to that he hasn't gone to yet that could change the Patriots' mind heading into 2024 if, in fact, they believe that they got the quarterback that can win them games. Yeah. Hey, exactly. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, I, stop trying to, to to read between the lines, folks. Just take a look and see who is uh, taking those number one reps this week at practice. And that's the guy that's going to be out there. And the guy that was taking the number one reps last week uh, before they, they broke for uh, for the bye week was Mac Jones. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. Called it. Very well said. Absolutely. And he did. And Bill O'Brien did make that point as well, yep. stating that Mac got the first team reps. He did say that Bailey Zappi got in there, got a chance to play a little bit more. Will Greer rotated in. I but love here's Will the... Greer. I, yeah. I, 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 honestly, folks, if you can go back a couple of drafts ago, I loved Will Greer coming out he of did. West Virginia. Mm-hmm. I thought he was a fantastic uh prospect i liked what he showed at the senior bowl everybody that was there that i know that scouted him thought that he had the stuff and maybe he was just in the wrong spot too you don't know but right now like i said last week will greer has not moved up the depth chart and he's been here for eight nine weeks now this is not an easy uh offense to absorb and to take in and when you haven't, when you weren't there for an entire off season, and somebody hands you the encyclopedia Bill Tanica, mm. you know it takes some time. So let's not rush anything. I'm glad that you mentioned Will Greer because he's a name that comes up an awful lot, but very enigmatic when it comes to Patriots fans. Not mm-hmm. a lot of stock to purchase in his body of work because it's not that extensive at a pro no. level, folks. We're talking 2019, the last time that he saw in-game action. Will Greer's record as a pro football quarterback, 0-2. He's got a completion percentage of 53.8, thrown 228 yards, no touchdowns, four interceptions. Zero. So it's difficult to say you're ready to hand the ball over and the keys to the kingdom to Mm -hmm. a guy with that stat line that hasn't taken a meaningful snap in an NFL uniform in over three years. Right. That's a lot to put on a guy's shoulders. And then you go back to what they said about Will Greer coming out of college, coming out of West Virginia. People think that he benefited from their system as much yep. as he helped their system grow. Right. And I think that is a good 50-50. I really do um, agree with that assessment. He's the guy that's going to throw for the big play. So if you're looking for someone that's going to take the chance down the field, Will Greer yeah. is not afraid to do it. No. Mark Schofield joined me here last week and gave us some good insight on Will Greer, stating that in 2019, when you talk to him at the combine, and he's going, I feel I'm the best quarterback in this class. You love that confidence. There's yep. definitely no shortage of bravado, but he's got to win from the pocket. That means he's got to work the middle of the field. He's got to anticipate getting rid of the ball sooner. That's something he did not do a very good no. job of at West Virginia. If you think Max hang on to it a long time, Will Greer is someone that is not designed to shed the ball quickly so he can. Does he have the skill to be able to change his game and do it? Maybe. I think he's an adaptable quarterback. He's definitely got the uh, the skill set and the athleticism to do it, but it does take time, and he may not be ready for that yet. I think the Patriots are weighing all of these options right now. That's why Bill O'Brien is saying so you're going to have to earn your spot with yep. your practice performance this week. That's why I don't think that's a bad decision. I think that's the best decision the Patriots can make. I agree. I agree. Uh, as as far as I'm concerned, it's it's still about winning football games. It's still, you know, in Bill's mind, it's still about chasing that elusive number. And he's going to go out there and do whatever he can to to win those games. Uh, draft status, uh, draft position, be damned. Mm, absolutely, and it is. You know, folks, it's a tough situation when you're looking at the New England Patriots and you're looking at what they want to do with the quarterback position. Uh, This is a team that didn't have to worry about the quarterback position for the most part for about two decades, if not more. For the first time, do they really have the guys in place? And look, Bailey Zappi has had the opportunity to come in now three different occasions, 10 completions, 104 yards, one interception, not exactly uh, a lot of confidence there as well. And For everyone that's talking about Malik Cunningham, and yes, there is an untapped potential there. We also haven't seen it from Malik in the times that he's been given the opportunity, save for that first drive against the Texans back in the preseason. So keep a sharp eye on the situation because a decision will be made sooner or later. Uh, The Patriots hit the practice fields at about 1 p.m. on Tuesday, and we'll start to get some answers then. 
We may not have our answer until the end of watch. the week, until after Thanksgiving. But uh, yeah, it could be interesting this week. Watch the side. I, I expect Mac to be in there, but watch the sidelines. Go back and watch watch former games and watch the sidelines as he's coming off. There is nobody shunning Mac Jones. There is nobody mm-hmm. in Mac Jones to say, except for coaches, and that's their job. Oh so yeah. Don't get confused. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's coach's job is to get in, get into somebody's face and let them know when they screwed up and when they missed this guy and they missed that guy, and um, and but no, you don't see other players doing that. You you okay. you don't see it. You don't see the the admonishment like you do up in Buffalo when people are screaming, "Just get me the damn ball, mm. guys!" Max still getting a fist bump, so you know that. All right, let's move. Well, on. Kate. Well, Kate, we thank you for your question yes. today. It definitely is the question on most Patriots fans' mind, and hopefully, we're able to give you a little insight. But we've got another great one coming from the mailbag in just a moment, Murph. Because the question is about those big round men up front that you love to talk about. <laughs> we're going to talk about the offensive line, its relation to the running game. We're even going to sprinkle in a little of our opinion as to which guy along that line is a must-have for next season. We're going to talk about all that and more when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster, and here's the best part, folks, for free. You will not believe how easy it is to create a free job post on LinkedIn Jobs until you try it. Just make sure to add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and who you'd like to hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Patriots fans, thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. And don't forget, folks, that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here today for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. So go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. And folks, if you haven't checked it out yet, you definitely want to do it. Subscribe. Make sure. I was checking out the uh, the Locked On channel all weekend long. I'm so proud to be a part of this network. If you're looking for national 24-7 coverage, it's the place to be. Definitely check that out. And Murph, in the previous segment, I think we talked about arguably the top question on all Patriots fans' minds right now. Who should be starting quarterback when the Pats take the field on Sunday and even moving forward? But one of the areas where this team has been probably as much deficient as any is on the offensive line. Maybe the only unit that has been more maligned than the quarterbacks or maybe even Coach Bill Belichick. But Mm -hmm. I think the line has gotten a lot of grief for obviously not protecting the quarterback, but also not protecting against the run. This question, I think, may be one of the most poignant and maybe the most important question to ask in Patriots Nation right now because it involves the offensive line and it involves the running game. And Leslie, at Cape Cod Gurley on Twitter asked a phenomenal question here and she wants to know how will the Patriots offensive line shelter the quarterback to provide successful attempts for the running backs Murph this is always your area of expertise you know more about these big round men up front when it comes to pass protection when it comes to run blocking what do the Pats need to do on this offensive line to get this running game going this team is not running the ball nearly enough OK, um, a lot of people got on Mac Jones for saying this, for wanting to run the ball more often. Um, it, it's simply a matter that that 
seven times out of 10, they know that it's going to be a drop back and they're going to sling it. Um, I can't set up play action pass if there's no play to action. All right. Um, this team has done a, a much better job over the last three to four weeks of run blocking. Whether you, whether you believe the stats or not, they, they are doing better. Um, a lot of people have made comments that that it's nice to see Ramondre acting like Ramondre again. He has looked fantastic. And oh, Zeke has looked really, really well, too. Yeah, and yes. this comes to a, a committed effort to a run game. Now, when um, when offensive linemen are constantly thinking backpedal, constantly thinking um, push guys out to the side, make sure that you get your double teams right, watch for that stunt up the middle. It's it's hard to get into a rhythm. When you get into a rhythm early as an offensive lineman, as one of those big round guys up front, um, we love to run block. We do. Mm-hmm. We hate pass block. Pass blocking sucks, man. Let's be <laughs> honest. It's just it's boring. Okay. I can't hurt anybody. All right. I'm not talking about harming people. I'm just talking about hurting people. I just want to put somebody on their There's a difference. That's folks. it. There's a difference between, you know, pain and injury, folks. And um and that's what we're talking about here. No, uh, what they what they need to do is is commit to the run more often. And one thing has been really different, with, with really difficult with the shuffling in and out of different guys at the guard position, different guys at the tackle position. Like I've said before, um, the 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 problem with with most of this line is the fact that they're depth pieces, but mm-hmm. they're being asked to play frontline pieces being asked to play starters minutes take starters snaps and it's not second nature to everybody yet okay these these young guards that are that are in here uh it's just not second nature to them yet yes they might have um somebody a veteran to either side of them but it's still you've got to know your job and when to do it you've got to know when to shed a block and and get further upfield um to to turn that four yard run into a six or a 10 yard run. And, uh, and that hasn't happened yet. A commitment to the run game will get these guys even better and it will help pass blocking because you're in a rhythm, you're in a mood. Okay. Yes. They, they complete this pass. We get a first down and then I get to run block again. Holy smoke. <laughs> Inside folks, you're only going to find here on locked on Patriots mm-hmm. from a man who played the position, coached the position and knows exactly what it takes to be that protective force along that offensive line. It is not easy. And yes, run blocking is definitely a lot more fun, a lot more rewarding than providing pass protection because pass protection, when you make mistakes in pass protection, it's a lot louder it than it we is. Don't wear, we don't run. wear forearm pads to pass block. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you look at what the Patriots lineup is consists of right now. Trent Brown has been a bright yeah. spot when he's on the field. When he's on the field. He's dealing with an injury right now, as well as a personal matter. Uh, He wasn't at practice last week, so you have to take a look and wonder whether or not Trent will be present and accounted for when the Patriots take the field on Tuesday. That is something to watch closely, folks. I'll be watching very closely at Foxborough on Tuesday. I know you all will as well. Connor McDermott, he comes in, provides decent protection. He's a veteran. He knows the system here in New England. He was taken off the field on uh, Sunday against the Colts. You don't know what his status is going to be moving forward. Cole Strange has had an up-and-down season. Injuries have really derailed what he's capable of doing. We've seen flashes of what he can do at the left guard position. I'm not going to berate Cole Strange by any stretch of the imagination. It's just inconsistent because there hasn't been enough of a sample size. Mm-hmm. David Andrews is solid in the middle. You know you're going to get 110% from him. If he's healthy, he's out there, and he's someone you can rely on. You don't have to worry about David. I like what I see from City So at right guard. I think he's finding his niche there. He has he's a still future. a rookie, folks. He's he still has a rookie. A absolutely, and he's going to make mistakes. But he will be someone that you can absolutely count on to be a part of this line moving forward. And the guy that I think worked his way into the Patriots' internal free agency uh, priority list, uh, he worked his way up to the top, is Michael Ueno. He definitely is someone that needs to be there at the right tackle position, providing that protection, doing what he needs to do. That was the best move that the Patriots could have made. And Should have done he, it week two, like we said to. Yeah, exactly. And that's what makes it so important to shore up the left side now. Right. And if Trent is going to be out, an encouraging sign on the field last week, Murph, 
was Riley Reef being activated yeah. from you know, injured reserve. A move, I'll be honest with you, I did not expect. I thought we had seen no. the last of Riley this right. season. He's coming. He could potentially come back, folks. 21-day window is open if he does, and Trent can't make it. You need his veteran presence on the left side at the tackle position because I think McDermott is someone that eventually may get exposed, and we've seen what Vidarian Lowe right. can do out there. The guy's doing the best he can, but it's just it's really difficult uh, to expect a lot out of him. No. So if they do that, folks, the New England Patriots have a chance to move forward. But like Murph said, if you're going to be successful blocking for the run, Patriots need to move the line of scrimmage like they did against the Indianapolis Colts. That's going to facilitate gap running plays. That's where this team runs yep. the ball the best. And you're going to see Ramondre Stevenson come alive and Ezekiel Elliott come alive. They That's both had right. excellent games on Sunday against the Colts. They were not the reason more. why you lost. Give folks. me more. Exactly. 88 from Ramondre Stevenson in terms of rushing yards, 54 from Ezekiel Elliott. Far from being the line's best effort, far from being what their best effort is capable of, right. such a move in the right direction. That's how you go about helping to facilitate this running game. Right. Excellent question, Leslie. Thank you so much. Get, get more in because we need more questions about big ground guys. Absolutely. And Leslie, thank you so much for a great question. We always appreciate your wisdom, your counsel, and your support here on Locked on Patriots. Thank you, along with Kate, for being an everydayer. And yep. Murph, we're not quite done with the Locked on Patriots mailbag just yet, because no. we have another question from a longtime everydayer, one of the OG everydayers here on Locked on Patriots. A man that may be worthy of a promotion to Capo Regime at some point. I really do believe this guy is one of our great supporters. He's a great friend and a great yep. football fan. Our good friend, Joel from Hull. Joel has a question about breakout performances. He also has a question about which Patriots might best be served by right. seeing a lot of time in the, la in the Patriots' last seven games. Want to see what these guys can do? Joel wants to see what these guys can do, and he wants to know what Murph and I think about what guys need to see the field to end this season on a high note. Murph and I are going to share that in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast wraps up right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, when it comes to game day, the only thing just as important as cheering on your favorite team is making sure that your game day table is well stocked. Why root for your team on an empty stomach? Order on DoorDash and save on all of your favorite football watch party favorites. After all, Patriots fans, nothing says game day like some wings, am I right? Well, now you can enjoy the hickory smoked wings in any of their 14 delicious sauce flavors from Bites at Patriots Place. That's right. It's just like a piece of Gillette Stadium delivered right to your door just in time for kickoff with DoorDash. So act now and you can get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. That's when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23. So don't delay, do it today. And don't forget to use the code LOCKED23, L-O-C-K-E-D-2-3 for 50% off up to a $10 value on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. Subject to change, terms apply. Patriots fans, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us here on Locked On Patriots, making us a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage, kicking off your Thanksgiving week here on Locked On Patriots. We hope you can take Murph and I and all of the great guests we have lined up here for Thanksgiving week with you in your travels if you are traveling for Thanksgiving. And if you are, we wish you all the best, and hopefully your travels will be safe and right. enjoyable to spend time with your families on Thursday. And don't forget, folks, it may be Thanksgiving, but it's still crossover Thursday here on Locked On Patriots. Joining me is my good friend and colleague, not only from Locked On, but also at Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Patricia Trena, who has covered the New York Giants for a number of years. Patty is among the best in the business, a dear friend, and it's going to be my honor to share the microphone with her on Thanksgiving Day as we cross the streams Locked on Patriots, Locked on Giants style, so stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss that one, folks. But here today is Familia, folks. There is no other way to put it. This man is the Don of Locked on Patriots, and he's already proven that in his wisdom and counsel. My good friend, Thomas Murphy of e 2 I pay him to say that. A little bit, a little bit. Check's a little late this, this month, Murph, but, you know, it's okay. We don't mind. <laughs> Got to kick up. <laughs> 
Bud, we've talked a lot of offense so far. Yeah. Uh, Kate had a tremendous question. Uh, wanted to know a lot about our thoughts on which Patriots should start at quarterback this coming week and moving forward. Yep. Leslie had another phenomenal question. Right. Wanting to know what the offensive line needs to do to get the running game going. I think we were able to provide at least some wisdom and counsel on these subjects, folks. You'd be the judge on that. But yep. this one is a little bit more objective, my friend. And this one comes from, again, like I tease coming into this segment, a good friend of the program. Murph, he's not just a good friend of mine. He's not just a good friend of yours. He's a friend of ours. And if yep. you've seen Donnie Brasco, you know what that means. You know what folks. we're talking about. Our good friend, Joel from Hull. And Joel is the definition of an everydayer here on Locked On Patriots. We appreciate all of his support. And Joel, I think, has a question that we can have a little fun with here to close the show today, buddy. Which Patriots players do you want to see get extended time on the field to gain more experience? Right. Murph, there are several ways to answer this question. You can go rookies. You can go veterans that are breaking yep. out. Where do you go on this? Who do you want to see more of in the second half of the season? Keon White. Mm, I want more choice. Keon White. I want I want him unleashed. I want him mm -hmm. let go. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the the pressure rate that the, the and I have gotten on this in my keys week after mm -hmm. week is the pressure rate getting onto the quarterback and it, it's been there. It's been good, but these guys aren't getting home. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to see Keon White uh, start to get more reps out there. He's he should be um, uh, well into the playbook now. The, the, the issue with White to this point is has been his relying on instinct and not on the playbook as to where he needs to be and where when he needs to be there. And that's led to a couple of breakdowns, a few a few long runs that that he needs to uh, to clean up. But he can't do that without experience. And you're not going to get that experience in practice. I want to see more Keon White. Oh, I think a lot of us want to see more Keon White. That nonstop motor, that ability to get after the quarterback right. is something that, Murph, you and I touted from the moment he was drafted. Right. And we sat here on these airwaves, and the draft had concluded, mm -hmm. and we had said that this was a guy that could possibly drop back into coverage, that could yep. be versatile all over the place. Several people thought that we were crazy, but at this stage in the game, and knowing what the Patriots are facing moving forward, you have to think Keon is a big part of their – future plans of defense. So right. let's showcase what the kid can do. That's Give it. him the opportunity to get after the passer. Don't make him a one-dimensional run defender. In a lot of ways, I think the Patriots were playing it safe early on. I think you need to unleash Keon a little bit and show what he can do, provided he's healthy, folks, and I have no reason to believe he's not. The Patriots will, I think, utilize him a little bit more. Um, and he's a rookie as well, so you want right. to see what the rookies yep. are going to be able to do. But the guy I really am looking forward to seeing more of, Murph, is Jelani Tavai. Jelani is having his best season as a pro so far, folks. All 10 games, 61 total tackles, yep. three quarterback hits, four pass breakups, one interception, one forced fumble. That's a great be stat rated, line. Be rated on a lot of airwaves in this town when mm. he was extended, when he was yep. given a, he was given a better deal. Yeah. All okay? of a sudden, that deal is looking good. It's <laughs> looking real cheap these yeah. days for what he's exactly. been able to do out there. Yeah. Just to give you an, an example, folks, and I'm sure you've seen the graphic over the weekend, lowest passer rating allowed with a minimum of 20 targets faced in the NFL, 54.0 for July. Damn. July. This is a good season, and I want to see more of him, folks. Not so much because he's got to prove himself, because Jelani is a veteran. But yep. when you have a season like this, I think it's incumbent upon coaches, it's incumbent upon the players around you to give you the opportunity to finish it and see it That's through. It. I want to see Jelani continue this type of production now for the remainder of the season. So keep him out there. Don't preserve him, folks. The argument is you don't want him to get hurt, obviously, right. uh, and you want to protect him because he is a valuable part mm. of this defense. But I really would love to see more of him and continue on and really put up, I think, his best season as a pro. So Jelani Tavai is a guy I want to see more out there and see him grow as a player day by day and game by game. That's it. And and just to, to um, you know, put a cherry on top of that, this kid has earned it. OK, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to, you know, when you see somebody go out there and put it all on the line, whether it's causing a fumble where it's jumping on a fumble or, or tipping a pass. So somebody else is making an interception. This kid has been everywhere. Mm -hmm. He's earned it. And it's kind of hard to say, yeah, you did your job. Go sit down for a while. <laughs> you know, absolutely. 
But um, Absolutely, yes. flipping it over, if you don't mind, over to the offensive side of the of the ball, I want to see um, wh- who I'm dubbing the three amigos. All right, I want to see more Keishawn Butte. I want to see more Demario Douglas, and yes, I want to see more of the Slim Reaper Ty- Taekwon Thornton. Now that last part of that is is um, predicated on his health, which has not been uh, his strong point. Uh, to to uh, to right now, the availability of Tyquan Thornton has been in question, and we all have uh, heard the old adage a thousand times: the best ability is availability. Mm-hmm. This kid has talent, and if he's used in the right way, uh, I think he can bring something uh, to the table. I am um, <clears throat> not putting down anybody that has been a pass catcher on this team, uh, but you know the the we got to see what's going to happen in the long run with some of these guys. And then somebody else that, that uh, I'd like to, to see a lot more of. And this also goes back to the, uh, the great question that Leslie asked uh, mm-hmm. on the running game is I would, I would like to see more Pharaoh Brown. Yeah. Let's, let's walk of- like an Egyptian here, people. All right. I'm not, I, I like, I love me some Pharaoh Brown. Every time he's on the field, something good happens. OK, nobody's think it's kind of like me when I used to play baseball. All right. One of the one of the, the best that one of the things that I'm most proud of in my baseball career. All right. Was the fact that I had never been caught stealing a base. Never, never. We're not talking three bases here. I have never been because nobody nobody expected it. There's there's round Murph over there. Did wasn't he snapping center for North Carolina High School back in the day? Yeah, he was. <laughs> I'm also stealing bags, second and third. And I, I wanted to be Ricky Henderson for Christ's <laughs> sakes. And nobody saw it coming. Nobody sees Pharaoh Brown coming. And every time mm-hmm. that he touches the ball, good things happen. Whether yeah. he's he's run blocking or he's getting out in a pattern, he's moving chains. I want to see more Pharaoh Brown. And I want to see him extended too. So let it be written, so let it be done. We all okay. want to see more Farrell Brown on the field. He's been a chunk play machine without question, yep. but this guy runs a better route than he's given credit for. He's a tremendous blocker. We knew right. that coming in, but his ability as a pass catcher and his electrifying nature of the way he plays the position, yeah, I'd love to see more Farrell on this field. And I think the Patriots were very surprised that he became available, pleasantly surprised. And I think the fact that he's been here showcasing what he can do only is going to enhance his uh, abilities moving forward. So, yeah, get him on the field. Let's see what he can do a little bit more. But I agree with you. If there's a guy that I want to see on the offensive side of the ball, it's Kayshawn without any question. I want to see the guy at LSU that yep. was able to adjust his body to yep. make four contested catches. He can do that, folks. He did it so often. If you're looking for issues with regard to his health or whatnot, supposedly everything looks good. It looks solid. So I'm looking at this and saying it's time. It's time now to take him off of Belichickian double secret probation, put him out there, showcase what he can do. If it's good, you got yourself a keeper for next season. And then you can build on two solid rookies and he and Pop Douglas. If not, that's it. You have to know. And to meet with a wide receiver, that's the only way that you can know. That's the only way that you can know. I mean, um, O'Brien talked earlier uh, today about who's earning their say. He wasn't just talking about um, the quarterback position. He was talking about all positions. And maybe Butte is not a practice player. I've I've coached those guys myself that for whatever reason, it doesn't click in practice or it's not. It, something does, Something looks off in practice. Okay, that, mm-hmm. that might be the case. I, I find it hard to believe. I think this kid's a playmaker. I think he's somebody that, that is is quick, decisive. And, you know, once in a while you have to look to coaching and, and Mm -hmm. I keep going back over there, but, you know, over the past several years, the, the wide receiver group has not been, um, stellar and they need to be coached up. And maybe Mm -hmm. that's where a change needs to be made. Bottom line, folks, it's going to be interesting what the Patriots are going to do, what they're not going to do. Unfamiliar territory for the Pats who have not been this far out of contention this late in the season right. in over two decades. Yeah. So how do you handle the players on the field? How do you make sure that players who need their reps are getting them? This team just has to learn how to win. For yeah. the last 20 years, they had a quarterback under under center that knew how to win. They had a, a tight end that knew how to win. They had a... um. A, uh, 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 a slot receiver that just hated to lose, which mm-hmm. I love. You could say that about all three of them. But um, 
But that's the way they, they, this team just needs to learn how to win. Yeah, they really, truly do. And with the talent they have in that room, you can teach this group how to win. Yep. But the question is, how do you walk that fine line of helping this team win with also knowing that you're making your future a lot brighter as well with a higher draft pick? It's a very right. fine line to walk, folks, and unenviable position for your New England Patriots, but it will make for interesting football, and I think maybe a little more intriguing football than all of us are anticipating. So, Joel, what can I say? Thank you so much for the amazing yeah. question to bring us home today. Oh, Leslie, Kate, amazing questions as well. All of you everydayers, all of you Locked On listeners, really, truly touch my heart each time you send in these great questions, proving that this is a phenomenal fan base and a fan base that is staying loyal to this team. Folks. Right. I know Forever. it's not easy to be a Patriots fan right now, but for two and a half decades, it was great times here in New England. The measure of a true fan right. is where you lie with this team in good times and in bad. You can criticize all you want. That's what fans do. You want to see the best product on the field. But don't shake your loyalty because this right. team needs it now more than ever. And it's great to see continued loyalty for your New England Patriots, win, lose, or draw. And speaking of loyalty, how much better can you get than my good friend over here on the opposite side of the screen? Don Murph, before I let you go today, please let everyone know where they can reach out to you and where they can interact with you and what we can look forward to Thanksgiving week here from the great pen, the great voice of Thomas Murphy. Um, you know, you can find out whatever's tickling my fancy right over there at e2gsports.com. Of course, the, the monster keys to victory, not to going up in the, uh, in the, uh, the draft order, but the keys to victory, uh, will be out on Friday. And until then, I'm, I'm not, you know, postings, this and that nothing happens in baseball till after Thanksgiving, except for moronic, uh, you know, postseason awards. <laughs> And what better description could you ask for than that, folks? You can't. Yep. It doesn't exist. But all kidding aside, I thank you, Murph, and thank you for always being here for the handoff when we need you. We are thankful for you, my friend. So to you and yours, a very happy Thanksgiving. We look forward to having you join us here, maybe after Thanksgiving and before the Ooh. New York Giants game. What do you think, Ooh. folks? Maybe I could a be little post-holiday monster keys. <laughs> I don't know. I think our appetite is just big enough to be able to, to, uh, to monster, work it. Monster leftovers. Monster leftovers. We're going to call them leftovers this time around. I like it, Murph. Ingenuity is great. That's it. All right. But all kidding aside, folks, we thank you for being there and for being a Locked On Patriots every day or, or a first timer or a casual listener. We appreciate each and every listen. So on behalf of my good friend, the Connor Murphy Fisto himself, I'm Mike DeBate reminding you to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone. And we will see you back here tomorrow on Tuesday's episode of Locked on Patreon.